Hello Year 11, welcome to your next poetry podcast with Mrs Tilly and Mrs Bud. Today we will be revising two more poems, Storm on the Island by Seamus Heaney and the extract from The Prelude by William Wordsworth. We will be making comparisons between them with a clear focus on how they portray the power of nature. Firstly, let's begin with Storm on the Island. Just remind ourselves about the poem and what it is about. It was written by Seamus Heaney, a poet from Northern Ireland who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1995. Heaney was well known for writing poems that covered themes such as childhood, nature and his homeland. Storm on the Island was written in 1966 and describes how a storm is approaching an island community. The ideas in the poem concern our uneasy relationship to power, natural forces and the feelings of vulnerability and fear we will feel in the face of the potentially destructive might of the storm. The poem begins by describing the experience of being in a clifftop cottage on an island just off the coast of Ireland during a storm. Heaney describes the bare ground, the sea and the wind. And the people are extremely isolated and could do nothing against the powerful and violent weather. The poem focuses on how the community feels and the idea that it is well prepared to withstand such a storm. However, as the poem progresses, the storm becomes even more powerful and the islanders feel more and more out of their depth. The last part of the poem centres on the fear of the community as the storm attacks the island. Here in the poem, the narrator uses a very conversational style and incorporates direct address to speak directly to us, the reader. The first part of the poem centres on the theme of safety and discusses how the community are confident that they will withstand the storm. Heena here uses the first person plural we to emphasise that collective community spirit of the people on the island. Furthermore, the poem is written in one compact stanza, which mirrors the compact and sturdy structure of the island and its houses. The volta here, which is the turning point in the poem, is found in the words, but no, which signifies a change in tone from security to feeling great fear. Now let's look at some of the key techniques that Heena uses in his poem. Firstly, the writer uses a chatty and informal tone to encourage the reader to reflect on and think about their own experiences of storms. This is evidenced in line seven with the phrase, you know what I mean. Furthermore, the poem begins with a series of words that emphasize the safety and security that the island provides. Words such as prepared, squat, and good slate impress upon the reader and the lack of fear that the community has at the start of the poem. The phrase, the wizened earth has never been troubled us, suggests that the island is barren and nothing much really grows there. Focusing on the noun company on line six also reinforces the idea of loneliness in the setting. Furthermore, the hostile nature of the environment is suggested by the use of repetition by Heaney in line 11, where he says, there are no trees, no natural shelter, which implies that the island may be vulnerable in a storm. The use of the violent verb pummels further enhances that idea. And again, the volta, that turning point in the poem, comes on line 14 when Heaney shifts the tone to illustrate the volatile threat posed by the storm. From this point on, the storm is presented in a much more dangerous way. The simile, spits like a tame cat turned savage, shows the reader that familiar things can become very frightening in a storm. The poem ends with a feeling of hopelessness that mirrors the hopelessness felt in a wartime situation. When he uses the verb bombarded, it connotes that the islanders are at war with the storm. Then the final line, it's a huge nothing we fear, shows the invisibility of the storm and juxtaposes the opening line 
we are prepared. If we have a look at the context of the poem, it is also important to consider things that were happening around the time. Things that Heaney would have lived through. Some people argue that the first eight letters of the poem's title, Stormont, connect to the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Stormont is in fact the name of the government buildings in Northern Ireland and there are suggestions that Heaney was in fact using the storm to comment on the political disturbances that raged between Catholics and Protestants throughout the Troubles. The poem could be a reference to Irish Republicans seeking independence from Great Britain. Now, let us move on and start looking at our second poem, The Prelude. This poem, written by William Wordsworth, who was a poet from the Lake District, was first published in 1850 and is quite autobiographical in style. It details key experiences from Wordsworth's own life. In fact, Wordsworth wrote an estimated 387 poems in his lifetime and one of his key themes was the beneficial power of nature. Wordsworth, a romantic poem, and like other poems of this type, discusses the way in which nature and human emotions are connected. It explores his childhood thoughts, the ways in which he has changed and grown over time. In the extract, he recounts an episode from his childhood when he stole a boat and rowed into the middle of a lake late at night. The poem here presents two contrasting ideas about nature and lets us decide what nature means personally. While also exploring his peace with nature, until an event occurs which changes the speaker's feelings towards the world. It begins on a summer evening when the narrator finds the boat which is moored next to a tree. He unties the rope and takes the boat out into the middle of the lake in the moonlight. Unlike Storm on the Island by Heaney, this poem is a first person narrative because it's taken from an autobiography. It has a very personal style and describes an important moment in the poet's life. In terms of its structure, the poem changes tones and they are very similar to Storm on the Island, as this poem starts off in a confident and assured tone and is then replaced by a much darker and fearful tone. At first, however, the narrator seems happy and confident and the poem focuses on the beauty of the lake and its surroundings. As the narrator rows further out onto the lake, a mountain appears on the horizon and the narrator is overwhelmed by its size and its power. This change in tone is reminiscent of the turning point in Storm on the Island, when the storm becomes more dangerous and more powerful. In the prelude, it may represent the boy coming to an age of understanding the dangers of the world around him. By the end of the prelude, the narrator turns the boat around and goes home, but is changed by the experienced forever. The final section of the poem discusses the lasting and haunting effect the, inex the experience has on the narrator. Mrs Budd will talk to you about this. Let's take a look at some examples of key language techniques in the poem. Firstly, the poem begins with some beautiful images of nature, which show the poet's appreciation for his surroundings. The imagery created on line nine of small circles glittering idly in the moon creates a peaceful and serene tone. In a similar way to Storm on the Island, the poet seems confident in the first part of the poem, using the simile, like a swan, to connote that he is in control in this environment. He gives the impression that he is powerful amongst nature. In the same way, in Storm on the Island, there is a turning point in this poem, when the tone becomes darker and the language changes to reflect this. The mountain appears on the horizon and the language becomes more threatening as it is personified. And on line 24, it's upreared its head like a monster. The poem takes on a different tone and creates a sense of fear and urgency as the narrators stole their way back to the covert of the willow tree. 
The verb stole implies a feeling of stealth and secrecy, as if the narrator has done something wrong and is now under threat. This mirrors Storm on the Island when the community are under threat from the storm, having previously felt safe and confident. At the end of the poem, the narrator creates a more grave and serious mood, suggesting that he cannot make sense of his experience, which has been a trouble to his dreams. We've now discussed the context and the content of each poem. Let's now focus on making some clear comparisons between the two. We want to examine how the power of nature is presented in each poem. Firstly, in both poems, nature is presented as something to be afraid of. In the prelude, the narrator personifies the oars and describes how they trembled as he tried to move quickly away from the mountain. The writer's intention may be to emphasise the power of nature and that it must always be respected. This theme is also seen in Storm on the Island when Heaney uses the oxymoron huge nothing to show that the fear of the community is based on something invisible. Alternatively, this may be a reference to the political instability of Northern Ireland and the fact that it is the invisible tensions that people fear the most. Furthermore, both poems suggest that sometimes nature can be overwhelming. Wordsworth refers to the mountain as a huge peak, black and huge. The repetition of the adjective huge suggests that the mountain was colossal and created a sense of awe and fear in Wordsworth. Similarly, in Storm on the Island, Heaney creates the image of an invisible threat of nature as the wind dives and strafes invisibly. Nature is yet again powerful and forceful, but in this context, it cannot be seen by the human eye. Heaney's military language here in the verbs strafes and bombarded reinforce the notion that nature is powerful and overwhelming at times, and that humans often have to battle against it as though at war with nature. The poems both display a similarly chaotic structure. In the prelude, Wordsworth uses enjambment to represent his panic and his fear after seeing the huge mountain. The enjambment creates a feeling of breathlessness as Wordsworth recounts the events of that night. This is particularly evident after the Volta when he is making his way back to the covert of the willow tree. In the same way, Heaney's poem adopts a chaotic structure and uses enjambment to create a feeling of panic as the storm develops and intensifies. This can be seen near the end of the poem when the simile, like a tamed cat turned savage, is used to show how a previously calm and manageable situation can quickly become out of control. We hope this has been useful for your revision, Year 11. Thank you for listening.